the short term, we could get a little more selling in here. Look, I mean, we've had a magnificent move off the bottom, Brian. I mean, even with this sell off, the Nasdaq is still up over 60 percent. So I think when you put it in context here, we were grossly overdue for some sort of correction. And, you know, you start looking at tech stocks. I mean, it just got so, so frothy. I mean, you talked about Tesla. I mean, the stock's up over 900 percent, yet their sales are up closer to 3 percent over the last 12 months. Um, so from any way you slice and dice it, I mean, tech just got to a point where valuation was getting, I'd almost say, silly. So I think it's healthy to see a final correction in the market here, especially on those big tech names that just seem like they couldn't go down at all. Um, and it also reminds you that at some point, the street, again, will care about earnings. It will care about valuation. You know, I talked to a trader last night, and I'm going to introduce a new term. We talked about this gamma squeeze idea last week. I'm going to give a new one to our viewers, reverse conversion. It's a complicated thing. It has to do with synthetic, synthetic long positions using derivatives and options. The trader I spoke to said that Tesla is not only an important stock to the market, it is the market in many ways because everybody has some kind of exposure to it. Stock up nearly 1,000% in a year, sales up just 3%. Is Tesla a good or a bad thing for the equity market? Huh. I think it's a good thing in the sense that you get all these new, you know, generationally, these millennials are getting invested now, which didn't get invested the last decade. Uh, they're starting to get involved in the stock market. Now they're probably treating it more like a casino uh, than actually a place to, as a, to be a long-term investor. So I think from that perspective, it's good. It's a bad thing in the sense that, you know, you're getting to a point now where a lot of these stocks are trading at dangerous levels. And, you know, when a stock appreciates like that, to your point on 3% sales, like how much can this stock tumble? And I always go back to the tech bubble back in 99, 2000. I mean, you had stocks like Cisco literally got cut by like 70, 80% from peak to trough when those stocks finally sold off. So I think the thing you have to remember here is when you have lofty valuations like this, 50% plus corrections, well, you know, that's not out of the question. You know, that's very, very possible here. Now, I don't yeah. know if we're there yet, Brian. I don't know if this is finally the tech bubble burst. But at some point, that's a realistic scenario. So what are you doing? And what are you advising your clients to do, Ryan? Well, you know, you and I have talked a lot about this, but, I mean, it really is the tale of two markets right now, right? You have tech stocks with just, like, grossly overvalued uh, in terms of valuation, and then you have the rest of the market. And if you look at the rest of the market now, I mean, it's still reasonably valued right now. The economy is still reopening, right? I mean, look at those unemployment numbers last week. We're way ahead of schedule, Brian. I mean, we're down to literally 8.4% on unemployment. That's months ahead of where economists thought we were going to be. GDP growth in the third quarter, fourth quarter is looking fantastic. I mean, we're going to look to be up like over 30%. So going back to that theme of anything that benefits from the reopening of the economy, whether it be financials, I talked about energy on your show last time, kind of regretting it this, uh, this morning because energy prices obviously have come down a lot here, but I still think that's a good long-term buy. And you start looking at where the smart money is going. And we talked about Warren Buffett last time, Berkshire Hathaway just picked up these five Japanese trading companies, which, you know, again, they, they trade at very, very low multiples. They've got high dividends. Um, and a lot of commodity-based businesses. So we like all those things. We like value a lot here just because that value growth gap is tremendous. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, if you look back to 99, 2000 again, when the tech bubble burst, value actually did well. International stocks actually did well. So diversifying your portfolio here is critical, and you have a great opportunity to do that. Pick up a lot of these other asset classes that, you know, really been on sale the whole time here.